click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in this video we are going to learn about how to find out the radius of Newton's rings. In order to find out the radius of the Newton's rings, we consider a schematic diagram of the entire Newton's rings arrangement. In this case, we are not going to show any ray diagram, but rather we are going to show the plano convex assembly. So here is the plano convex lens and this plano convex lens is a part of this bigger circle. So the radius of curvature of this particular plano convex lens that is being used to observe Newton's rings is given by CO. Maybe we can call this particular parameter as R. This is the plate which is in contact with the plano convex lens at the point O and we are considering the interference that is taking place at the point T. The resultant radius of the ring at the point T, I will not say at the point T but rather at the point P2 at which the thickness of the plano convex lens is T, the corresponding ring now that can be either a bright ring or a dark ring. The radius of that particular ring is Rn. From this geometry now, we need to find out an expression for the thickness, right? Or we also want to find out the expression for the ring number. Let us see now how do we do that. So for that consider CO. We also draw another line or other radius C P2. You will all agree that CO is equal to C P2 is equal to the radius of curvature. Next we drop a perpendicular from the point P2 to N and P2 N is equal to O Q2 which is going to be the radius of the nth ring in the Newton's ring pattern. Mind you this particular radius can either be of a bright ring or it can be of a dark ring. So from this we are having two expressions now. Let us see what happens in this triangle in triangle C and P. What happens in this triangle is C P square C P 2 square is equal to C N square plus N P 2 square which is a normal Pythagoras theorem that we are using. Cp2 square is nothing but the radius of curvature of the plano convex lens. Cn square over here we can write this as r r minus of t because p2q2 is equal to no. So that is going to be equal to minus of t the whole square wherein t is the thickness of the plano convex lens at which I am observing a ring of radius Rn plus Np2 square what is Np2 square? Np2 square is nothing but the radius of the nth ring R square because this that is OQ2 is equal to NP2. Simplifying this equation further, you can write it as R square is equal to R square minus of 2 RT plus T square and plus RN square. I simplify this further by assuming that since t is very small, square of that is going to be still smaller. So this is going to be equal to r square 
is approximately equal to r square minus of 2 r t plus r n the whole square. Simplify thing, this I will write it as 2 r t is equal to r n square or your thickness is going to be equal to r n square upon 2 r. So, this is going to be the expression of the thickness for which the ring is going to be r n. So, this is going to be your expression. Let me call this expression, let us say as 1. What do we do next? We now know the thickness for observing the maxima that is the bright band and we also know the thickness for observing the minima that is the dark band. So, let us write down these expressions first and then we equate those expressions with this thickness in order to find out the value of Rn in terms of known parameters. So, these are the expressions. So, this is an expression that we have obtained by analyzing the ring number and the thickness at that particular ring. So, this was our expression. We know the expressions for which we are going to observe the maxima or a bright band is the corresponding thickness of the plano convex lens and the corresponding thickness of the plano convex lens for observing the minima or the dark band. Now, these two I can very well equate. So, for the maxima, I can very well say that your Rn square upon 2R is equal to 2N plus or minus 1 into lambda upon 4 mu and this is going to be equal to Rn square is going to be equal to 2N plus or minus 1 into lambda into R divided by 2 mu. So, this is going to be your expression for the nth, I shall add over here for the nth bright ring. Similarly, I can write down the expression for the nth ring and this is going to be of course the dark ring upon 2R is going to be equal to n lambda upon 2 into mu and this is going to be equal to Rn square is going to be equal to n into R into lambda divided by mu and to be more specific I will write this as dark. So, in this case you have observed that the radius of the nth ring is proportional to n rather the square of the radius is going to be proportional to n and one very important finding which we have is Rn is proportional to square root of n. This means that the radius of the rings and specifically dark rings this will actually be proportional to the square root of the order or rather n is nothing but the it gives you the order or rather the ring number which is the first second third fourth ring. So, it is not a linear variation but rather it is a the variation is in terms of square root. Similarly, over here too you can write that your R n for the bright ring is proportional to these and these are actually constants. So, I will say it is proportional to 2n plus or minus 1. So, what this suggests is in this case you can also write down the diameter. So, what is the diameter in this case? The diameter will be equal to d n square. So, r n is nothing but d n upon 2. So, when I take the square of that, this is going to be equal to dn square upon 4. 
so this is going to be equal to proportional to right your 4 times n if at all i am taking the square root but in either ways it is always so your d n square is proportional to 4 n so in either case whether you are considering the radius or whether you are considering the diameter both of them are proportional to the square root of n that is square root of the ring number and this is a very important property of newton's rings thus we have obtained an expression for the nth ring in terms of the known parameters and what are the known parameters the radius of curvature the ring number the wavelength that you're using and the refractive index of the medium that is present between the plano convex lens and the flat surface since you thank students for watching this particular video stay tuned to ekida and do subscribe to ekida thanks a lot